All right, so it's the next day. I've done some work on it. What I decided to do on the battery tray was to modify the one that I already had on here. And so what I've got is um, I flattened this side out and I rebent that side. Well, I flattened it out then I bent it back because I figured I found out it's going to work fine like that. And so when I originally put this battery tray on here, I didn't realize it, but I got it kind of off-centered, which works to my advantage. I didn't measure it, I just eyeballed it in there and welded it. And um, so what I did, the battery will sit, they'll slide in from the side right here. And I'll show you one, I don't want to put one right over there because I just welded and ground, ground it down. It's going to sit like that. And I'm going to have a piece of angle iron. I don't have a small piece off to bend up some out of some flat plate. But um, well, I got this little piece. You can see that's how because I got to have it where I can get the batteries in and out because there's there's not enough room. They're going to have to slide in. Um, so a piece of angle iron kind of like that that's going to bolt there'll be a hole here in the tray and one here this is the piece that I added on just a piece of flat uh, sheet metal that I uh, bent and made kind of a tray and then I welded welded the two together and then ground it back down so you'll have the three batteries sitting in here this one is cut out for clearance because um, the tire see but the battery will sit flush to here. You know, the battery doesn't stick out further. This extra is for my angle iron piece to mount. So the angle iron piece will come all the way out to here, but I'm going to cut a piece out of it so the side will just continue out. So it'll bolt here, and then that's where the bottom part of the angle iron will end. But the side of it will continue on to cover up the whole side of the battery. So that's how the tray is going to work. And then I can just slide the batteries in from the side. And actually, even with the body on, I can turn the wheel like that. And I can slide the batteries in through here. There's enough clearance um, right in here to be able to slide the batteries in and over, I think. But I'll probably have the body off anyway when I put the batteries in. But if I ever needed to replace them, well, it's going to be easier just to take the body off. because of how they're going to be wired and everything. You're not going to be able to wire it or undo the wires with the body on. So it's pretty easy. It's just four bolts to get the body off. And then um, you wouldn't have to take the body completely off. You leave the handlebars on and just enough to where you can pick the body up. So four, four bolts and the body is off or loose. So it's welded in the front, welded on the bottom. To the frame and then welded together with the other tray which is also welded to the frame so it's good and stout i will have a pad in here um, kind of like i did on the others and then i'm going to have to uh, make steering stops because it is going to uh, turn into it so this side just barely touches and this side I'm just going to have to put just a little bit of a stop on it. You can see how close it is to almost turning all the way. So we'll just put a little piece on here to uh, extend it. I may just weld weld a blob on it. Probably be good enough. So let me, um, let me bend up a piece of angle iron or look around see if I got a piece somewhere. But I don't think I do. I think I'm just going to take a piece of flat and bend it to put in there. And it'll just bolt right around here, right around here. And so you get the batteries in, bolt it in, and they're secured. And then there'll be a tie wrap around them and over them and just to make sure they don't shift around in the tray. So let's see how that in looks once I get that done. All right. So here's what we've got. Um... I bent that piece of uh, 
a piece of sheet metal and I cut it and made it bend it make like a little piece of angle iron and like I said I'm going to have to do a little steering stop because it's going to hit that corner right there but it almost steers all the way um, the same the other way it almost goes all the way so that's what it's like um, the batteries are offset just a little bit but that's fine um, kept me from having to move the battery tray which is nice um, Now I got these where I can't get them undone. So to get the batteries out, all I'll have to do is unbolt these three bolts. You know, you finger tighten something and you don't think that it'll be hard to get off. Put some Loctite on these, some blue Loctite, or some lock washers or something, just to make sure they don't get loose. You just take those out. That comes out. And you can just slide the batteries out. like that. So I need to figure out now how I want the, well I'm going to cut my pad to go in there and I'm going to figure out how I want the batteries to be sitting to make it the easiest to wire up. Actually, before I do that, I need to weld a little tab on here to mount my controller. So let me do that and then I'll figure out how I'm going to do the batteries. So I think I'm at my stopping point for today. What I've got is the mat in, and what these are, somebody had given me a, I like these oil, they use, you're supposed to use them to soak up spills, like oil spills and stuff. But it's some good stuff. It's, um, I don't know, you know, it, it holds its, it's fibered, so even if it gets wet, you know, it holds its shape, you know, it doesn't disintegrate. So that's what I used. Um, I just cut it out, and that's what I'd used before and it, for, this, for the mat for the batteries, and it was still in good shape when I pulled it out. So I just made a bigger one, and it just wraps up on the sides. And so I, I welded a little plate. Um, there, and I've got the controller mounted. Now I'll run all my wires like that. Um, like I said, the batteries are in. I will tie wrap them all together. I decided on my how I was going to run my wires or how I wanted the batteries sitting. Basically what I wanted was, um, I did not want terminals together, see, so the batteries don't have terminals facing each other, so that was the optimum way. This one's pointing out, this one didn't really matter which way it faced, um, but I can take this one, this positive, run back here to this negative and I'll come off with my main negative post here and then I'll have to cross over here which this is open right here I can do that um, negative to positive and then I'll have my positive here so my positive and negative will be on that side so and that will feed into right there so I need to get my wiring 
I'm gonna have to make some wires to tie the batteries together, but some of my wiring we'll need our fuses. And here's our battery input. I'm going to need to make up one more of these. This is a uh, goes between the batteries. And I wonder if that's the same connector. So I'll just end up, I don't have a connector for this, it didn't come with any, so I'll end up just plugging it straight in. Hmm. So we won't use that, and we'll need to, um, like I said, I'll need to do one more fuse holder. Let me just buy two fuse holders, not reuse this one. We need a we need to we need a fuse where we tie the batteries together. So if you short out basically two fuses. So yeah. Positive to negative fused between these two. So you have these two fused and then you'll have another fuse from there to there. And then that will feed into the controller. I wonder what size wire they use. They probably use 12, 12 gauge. Should be plenty thick enough. And I wonder if my motor connector is the same. Hey, I think the motor connector is the same plug. If I can get a few more inches out of it. Hey, that part's done. What do you know? Boom. Part of the wiring's done. <laughs> that works. And I wish I had another connector there, but I can, uh, I've got some regular spade terminals, shielded spade terminals I could do. Could just feed them into there. Anyway, I wonder, while we're sorting out wiring stuff, here's my, uh, And here, I don't know. I looked at the wiring. Oh, here it is. I looked at the wiring diagram, but I don't remember it. Yeah, it comes with a different plug. It looks like. So that's going to be another one. I'll have to just. Uh, Probably probably use those uh, spade terminals that are shielded. Let's see. Have some. I oh, bought some. Let me use some of these so I can unplug them. Now you can reclaim some wiring off the old connector. I'm missing something. Oh yeah, see that's got the same plug that my throttle came with. My controller just has a different plug. And that's the black and red for the brake. 
brake switch. Brake switch on here may match up. I need to print out the wiring diagram. Don't think it came with one. But it's, it is available online. Oh, it did come with one. Okay. So here's what we got. Oh. This is going to be my reverse switch. Dual pole. On off. So when you turn it on, what it's going to do, why I'm using dual pole, is if you look, so reverse switch. When the orange and blue are connected, the motor is reversed. So, orange and blue, and then we're also going to do the speed selection switch for low, which is black and brown. So when you switch it to reverse, black and brown will hook up to the other side of the switch. So when you put it in reverse, it'll reverse the motor and it'll go low speed. So you'll have low speed reverse. So you don't go full speed. Anyway, we'll get it wired up. Thanks for watching.